the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. And let us bring our prayers of petitions, our thanksgivings, everything that we hold in our hearts, in our minds all the pain, the sorrow, the difficulties, the challenges, the joys. Let us bring everything and place it into God's hand. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. I feel a divine jealousy for you, for I betrothed you to Christ, to present you as a pure bride to her one husband. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you submit to it readily enough. I think that I am not in the least inferior to these superlative apostles. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, I am not in knowledge. In every way, we have made this plain to you in all things. Did I commit a sin in abasing myself so that you might be exalted because I preached God's gospel without cost to you? I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in want, I did not burden anyone for my needs were supplied by the brethren who came from Macedonia. So I refrain and will refrain from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boast of mine shall not be silence in the regions of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God has spoken to us that our loving response be, Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. Hallelujah. I will thank the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and their assembly. Great are the works of the Lord to be pondered by all who love them. Your works, O Lord, works, o are, Lord justice are justice and, and truth. truth. Majestic and glorious his work. His justice stands firm forever. 
He makes us remember his wonders. The Lord is compassion and love. Your works, O Lord, are justice and truth. His works are justice and truth. His precepts are all of them sure, standing firm forever and ever. They are made in uprightness and truth. Your works, Your works O Lord, Lord, are justice, justice and, and truth. truth. Kindly arise to prepare our hearts and minds for the gospel. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father also will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, once again as we uh, reflect in the gospel today how Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. It also becomes an opportunity for us to, to ask, uh, what has become my prayer life? How am I praying? What is prayer for me? And what prayer does for me? And my dear friends, as I place this few thoughts before you to reflect, it is not to say that we don't know what prayer is, we don't know how to pray, or we, have, we don't know, or we are not being taught how to pray. Prayer is something that goes with us as we grow. From the young days, our parents have taught us to pray. As we grew up, we learned to pray. And now we do know what prayer means, which other prayers were successful and effective. Yet it would be nice, my dear friends, to just reflect, to revive, or to just ask ourselves, okay, does prayer really mean anything to me? And to be able to understand that I have these three C's, what prayer could be and how prayer can be effective in our lives, how through a prayer we can grow spiritually, okay? The first C, it's just simple to understand that prayer is a communication. We know that, okay? Prayer cannot be something other than communication. It is a communication between God and with the person. That is what Jesus is teaching his disciples. Okay? Let your prayer not just be empty phrases like the Gentiles do. Let your prayer be a communication. Let it be something that comes from your heart 
and you know to whom you are communicating with. You are communicating with that person who loves you so much. That's why say our father. Maybe because maybe according to their concept that God was a God who is a distant God, who is a frightful God, he's there up there, uh, the much doesn't have much to do with us. Okay, okay, I need to pray, he's there, okay. Here is a something that Jesus brings closer to our hearts, okay? Communication. You are communicating with someone who loves you, who cares for you, okay? And that communication also builds our relationship with God. So first, I need to ask myself, is my prayer a communication? A communication that I wish to have with someone whom I really love, like the communication I have with the father, the mother that I love in our families, with my sisters, with my brothers. A communication sometimes that I wish to have with my friend, whom I know really cares for me. A communication that brings joy, the communication that brings peace. That is what Jesus is teaching his disciples. Let it be a communication. Secondly, a prayer is a connection. We will see in here Jesus wants his disciples to be connected with the Father, to be connected with themselves. Give us our daily bread. It connects us with the universe, with something that is so essential physically to our lives. It connects us with our neighbors, with our brothers and sisters. Okay, Let us forgive one another, something which is so very important and special. Okay? And therefore we see when we want to connect ourselves with God, we seek His will. Glory be your name. Your kingdom come. Your name will be hallowed. Okay. Connection with the God as I understand who God is. Okay. Connection with myself as I understand who I am. The person who is of this earth needs to be nourished. A connection with the universe, with the creation. Okay. A connection with one another, knowing that I am a humble person, I am a sinner. I falter, I need forgiveness. Just as I want forgiveness, I also give that forgiveness. That is what Jesus stresses. Let it be a connection of love. Sometimes with our hatred, with our vengeance, with our misunderstanding, with hurts, we break that connection. Because of those things, I don't want to connect with you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to have, want to have anything with you. Because when we have those these connections, we cannot relate. And so that's, that's why Jesus said, let us that prayer be a connection. Now very often this prayer that Jesus has taught has, is being used for so many occasions. Pray, pray. And when they say pray, pray, people don't know what to pray. Then they start our father praying. They started one Hail Mary. Sometimes not even realizing what we say. Offering one Our Father, three Hail Mary. There are sometimes chains being sent. Let us not break this chain. Let us say Our Father, one Hail Mary, ten Hail Marys. Ten Our Fathers, three Our Fathers. And so therefore, it is very important to understand. Is, did Jesus teach us that for, for such things? So for me to be connected. Me to be connected with one another. A prayer is a connection. And thirdly, prayer comforts us. That's something beautiful about prayer. Okay. When we are in distress, when we are in pain, when we have difficulties, when we are ch have challenges, what is it that we would want our friend to do for us? Very often, just pray. Now in this pandemic, so many people have been sending this request of prayer. They were saying, Father, please pray. My brother is sick. My husband is sick. My children are sick. Okay. There's somebody in the hospital. One of my relatives fighting between life and death. Father, please pray. And when I just respond back immediately and say, I assure of my prayers, I am there to pray for you, I am sure the other person feels so comforted. Oh, Father is going to pray for me. My friends are going to pray for me. God's will is God's will. But at that moment, I need that comfort. I need that consolation. And the best comfort and the consolation that we can give to someone who is in distress, who is in, prayer, who is in pain, is prayer. I will pray for you. I will lift you up on the altar as I celebrate it. And that's what I tell many people when they ask me to pray. I said, I prayed for you during the Holy Eucharist. Because for me, that is something par excellence. And people feel comforted. People feel nice. Even, even if it is God's will that the prayers are not answered, we may feel it sometimes like that. Father, my brother, somebody was very sick, serious. People are asking to pray. Maybe he died, he passed away. It looks like our prayers are not answered. No, God has his own will. We have no answers to that actually. But then ultimately, prayer is only the thing that will console them, comfort them. 
That is only through prayer that we can ask the Lord to be with them in their pain, in their sorrow, in their loss, in their grief. And that is what, my dear friends, Jesus probably is asking us to trust in God, that the prayer always comforts us. And therefore, we see how God has given us this prayer, not just to babble with words, not to make it an empty phrases, but to really make it our own. And therefore, my dear friends, we understand that our Father is a prayer which is so rich. There are so wonderful reflections that are being written on this prayer. There are volumes written by saints and other gospel exegetes on what this prayer could mean in so many ways. But very simply for our us, as simple as we are, common as we are, simple people as we are, this prayer has a meaning when I understand it as a communication. When I understand it, that it connects me with one another, with God, with the nature. When I understand that prayer comforts me. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice your at your hands, hands for the praise, praise and, and glory of his name, name for, for our, our good, good and good, good of all his church. O God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the Francis, our Pope, and Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, St. Agnes, St. Francis Xavier, St. Joseph Vaz, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Here is the time, my dear friends, that we now pray that prayer Jesus has taught us. Let it not become empty praises, but empty phrases, but a prayer that comes from our heart, a communication, a connection, and one that comforts us. We pray, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us lovingly offer to each other the sign of peace. Lamb of, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say, say the word, word and, and my soul shall be healed. Since we cannot receive Jesus at this moment sacramentally, let us make an act of spiritual communion and experience the presence of Jesus who is in us, who dwells in our hearts, who abides in us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may, it, so may it bring about unity in your Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you.